Um, just to let you know, we have uh, two items on medical marijuana that are scheduled for 1045. I'm going to try to squeeze in uh, item number 33 about community TV at this point, and then we'll take a short break, and then we'll uh, hopefully be back fairly close to 1045 in order to start those two items. So the next item will be item 33 is to consider a report on community TV merger plans and budget. We have a letter of Director of Information Services dated June 8, 2013. We have a letter of the interim executive of the community television, and we have a contract between the city of Santa Cruz, the county of Santa Cruz, and community television. And we have Mr. Bowling to give us a report on this. Good morning, board. No tie this morning. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was like just yesterday that I was standing here. <laughs> oh, wait, it was. A <laughs> um, couple things today. You have in the packet a one-year contract with Community TV, the county, and the city. Um, that's got a, it's a one-year contract with a one-year extension. We, um, it shows a 21% reduction on Community TV's um, expenditures for next year. And if we go into the year two, it drops down to more, to a 291,000. So we'd like to get that approved today. I was also asked uh, earlier at the last meeting to come back with what a fully loaded charge would be um, if we spread the charges to all the government entities. That's in the board letter. There were two ways to do it. One was that we could take their base budget and then just divide, assume that there was no additional revenue for community TV. Uh, that one showed charges that I don't think anybody would go along with. The, the other one was um, Lynn Miller calculated out what the cost to provide those services are fully loaded with their overhead into it. And that's what we see down there. That's what they'll be working towards um, for tw the 2014-2015 budget. Um, Want to talk a little bit about the future. Um, Susan's had us thinking outside the box a lot. And she's done some really good discussions with us in this area. Everything we've been focusing on now is sustainability of community TV once they lose um, the local franchise revenue. We've had more discussions with Cabrillo. We're going to continue outreach with Cabrillo because we do think that there is some potentials there. If we look at what the future revenue offerings that could be there for community TV, we of course have government access as one of them. The education outreach from the, that area is a second part. Um, Susan's had us really looking into this idea of trying to do a public partner um, partnership and see if there's some productions where we could use um, some private um, firms doing productions and using some of the money that comes in from that to go to community TV for sustainability and offset some base costs for running that. We've also, with the new media server, which will be installed, it's, everything's here. It'll be installed next month during the break and will be up and running by the end of July. That's going to give um, community TV a much more automated picture and we'll be able to upload public access um, directly from the producers from, you know, they can upload directly into the server. So they'll need fewer staff for that. Community TV is also going to be hiring a development person, and look, they'll be looking for additional um, funding and revenue potentials. The newest thing that we've looked at is this idea of a public-private partnership. We opened a purchase order with Dunbar Productions, and we have Romney Dunbar, who's here today, looking, since he's in this market, and you know, is always looking for money, I mean, he, he has some good ideas. So what he's looking at is, we have him looking at strat strategies for obtaining additional funding for community TV. Is there partnership possibilities with community groups, nonprofit groups, and government that, that we can take advantage of? Um, he's also looking at, a, is there a place where we can develop a plan for locally produced content that could be developed with sponsorships? And finally, he's going to develop a preliminary plan that would include pricing and program content areas. Dunbar Productions is going to partner with Community TV in the future for additional programming. 
that's just some brief comments. What we have on the board that we're asking you to do today is to uh, accept this report, approve the budget from Community TV for next year, approve the one-year contract, and authorize the trust fund for expenditures. Today we have Lynn Miller, the interim executive director, Keith Gudger, their president of Community TV, Kathy Bisbee from CMAP, and Romney Dunbar here. And we're all available for any questions or comments you have. Thank you very much. Are there any questions that the board has at this time? Yes, Supervisor Leopold. Uh, I was just wondering if you could just, uh, I don't know whether uh, Mr. Dunbar or you want to just describe a little bit more about what it is he's going to do. It, uh, I think I understand it. Um, it. It seems like an appendage of community TV, uh, but it's a little unusual, so I just want to. It is a little unusual. I think it would actually be good to have Romney come up and, and, and talk a little bit about the work that he's doing. Maybe as he um, makes his way to the podium, let me just say that there have been a number of community television organizations throughout the country that have failed as a result of uh, these changes to the difficult environment, and we don't want that to happen here. We're very committed to trying to obtain a robust organizational structure that will allow us to, to go into the future with a good financial footing. And so the ordinary models where you do fundraising and when you do those kinds of uh, outreach activities as a usual nonprofit in a community are all ones that we should employ and we will employ. Um, but we also realize that we need to think a little bit more strategically. And so we use the models of uh, public television around uh, the country, all those stations that we know and love, KUSP and and uh, other radio stations as well have also played a part in trying to develop a structure that would allow us to have sponsorships and underwriters of programming that would allow uh, content to be delivered to the community that is of a local character and is supportive of the um, kinds of uh, viewing that our community would like to see that ties in in some ways to some of the things we've been talking about in terms of economic development and tourism, a good place for tourists to go to watch uh, what might be available in the community. And again, I think as, um, as uh, Kevin has pointed out, uh, Dunbar Productions has been doing this in the community on a commercial basis for a very long time. So we um, queried Romney about the possibilities of coming up with a strategy to um, use those skills and resources that he's developed in our own local economic market and try to figure out whether or not there might be a way to develop um, a kind of strategy that would allow a return on investment to community television, which would allow them to underwrite their costs for the future. And so uh, that's the concept from this end, but I'm going to let the expert tell you a lot more. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Hi. Um, just to pick up on that comment of, of sort of this appendage, that's a good term, uh, Supervisor Leopold. Um, what we have here is a broken model and a deadline, and many channels have gone dark uh, around the country. That's very well known. There's a very good transition plan in place for community TV and the folks who are sitting behind me. The difference is that sort of speeds this up or, or gives me a role is this search for a rate card, if you will. Uh, there are day parts to use the TV parlance, or there are hours of the day that are now available uh, other than the things that are required, the meetings, such as uh, with these cameras right here. Um, some of these uh, things, the service that these access channels have provided. There may be a good way to shape, if you think sort of PBS local as a model, um, content that might be new or fresh to, uh, to these channels that might speak to different parts of, of, uh, of the community that can be subsidized, sold for lack of a better term, supported, so that um, we're, we're in a sense making some of the hours of these channels more competitive. Maybe not so much for eyeballs of the viewer, but in a sense for serving uh, the community in, in some different ways, talking about tourism or economic development. So that if the quality and the service of these channels is perceived to be improving, more people will open their pocketbooks to support it. Uh, there will also be some ways to get uh, inexpensive content, if you will, free content that may also be sponsored because it's a way to showcase some of the great creativity that's starting to happen with the young people, say at Cabrillo or UCSC uh, Digital uh, 
you know, digital departments. So there's a real opportunity here. It's, it's, a, it's a big issue. There are a lot of moving parts to community TV and what it, what it does, and it has to move and all those things. But it's a great opportunity because video is only going to become more valuable. It's a greatly leveraged medium. The streaming uh, capabilities that the county now has, these channels uh, for awareness. So I think there, it, there's a new day dawning, and, and it has to be a public-private hybrid, I think, to be sustainable, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, I think that uh, I'm all for trying to find uh, new uh, revenue streams, because historically, uh, community TV hasn't been hasn't generated the kind of, uh, of uh, fundraising that would say that that alone is going to is going to support it. Uh, the concern, um, the balance really to be found is how do you avoid uh, the these community access channels becoming uh, day long advertisements for something else. Uh, and uh, I, I'm I guess I'm, I'm what I'm trying to figure out is. Is the content that you're going to do that maybe let's talk about the beautiful beaches that we have here? Did you know the history of, of what happened here at Cal's or that happened in the World Surfing Reserve or whatever that is? Uh, does that get edited and sold to a commercial establishment and then that revenue comes back to community TV? It can. I mean, it I'm, can. Just, I'm just trying to think how. Uh, uh, right. How the money. I, works. I don't think we're short of content on right. uh, on community access TV. What what we're short on is money. And uh, trying to figure out how, uh, how, what your role is going to be in terms of helping bring dollars to, to, the, to the community access, that's what I'm curious about. Right. It's sort of a market test um, experiment. So what we're trying to do now is to take the a couple of projects that we have on, on our schedule and we're shopping them, basically. We're shopping them for support. We're trying to find sort of where the rubber meets the road with uh, with those that could support programming, um, giving them higher visibility in the community. Could give me, give me some example. What I'm trying to do is fi figure uh, uh, some example of how this would all work. Well, you don't have to say exactly the yeah, project. Yeah, just started. On, but but um, like that. for instance, um, we talked about let's say the community foundation or uh, or nonprofits. Even if we're, we're still looking that that way, we there's there be a there could be a way to showcase. Uh, you know, real stories in the community about what they do, how they how they are serving, uh, why they're so valuable, and you know, you could get a very good return on the production quality of community TV, the streaming uh, process that can be shared by that organization, and then that money can be uh, wholesaled in a in in a sense. It can be well produced, and the the money that it, that comes in. A large share goes to community TV, so you're so starting you're, to generate you're, you're, you're new money. Something about com uh, community foundation, just say as an example. Sure. You get them then to underwrite the production of, of this yes. this piece, right. and it could be a piece or it could be a series. You could start to develop this idea that what you want is a future, so it's going to be an ongoing concern. So you could have something called foundations of the community, right? And every you know, week or, or twice a month or something like that would be this focus on something that would be interesting and you could um, you know, shell it out a little bit more and you could get a little deeper about it and that would be something that would be valuable and could be reused several, it could air several times a year and all that jazz. So that would be one way to do it so that there would be a long-term relationship and funding relationship with someone like the Community Foundation. They would suddenly have a new venue, in a sense, in their mind that they might not have seen community TV as being the source of. But that would, that would be one example. Yeah, I just, I, I don't want community TV to turn into the hotel channel. Right. right. I mean, that's, that, right. That's, I mean there, there's a, there may be a place for that. But, uh, but you know, there's, I, I'd like to, for us to create some kind of model where we're, we're highlighting what's great about Santa Cruz, but not... Um, it literally can't be advertising. So this is something we're wrestling with uh, in the couple weeks I've been thinking about this. What, ha what does content have to be like to be in this venue? Uh, and it has to be underwritten, but it really can't be a direct sales pitch or, pro or profile of a business. Yeah, I, I, I know you're a, you're a local guy, and that I, I totally appreciate that, and so I think you bring that, that local perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's probably uh, not someone who's better suited for investigating this. 
and it's you know the devil will be in the details uh, about how it goes. But uh, you know I think we do need to look creatively at uh, at how we plan for the future and can afford right. to keep this uh, service going. So thank you. Sure. Is there any other questions from the board? No, I'd just like to thank your your involvement in this too because uh, you have a great reputation, well deserved, and uh, I think this could help us along. We can't go on you know, doing the same thing over again. It's not going to work. Right. It hasn't worked other, elsewhere. So I'm really glad that you're involved and that we're taking a new look at uh, how we can provide. There's great space. potential here, but it is very early. So I apologize for that. I'm really wrapping my uh, head around it. But there's a, a you know, phenomenal potential here in, in what can be done. So thank you. I look forward to it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody from the audience that would like to speak to us on this item? Um, thank you, Supervisor Leopold, for your statement. I don't think that we're short on content, we're short on money. And I'm worried when there's a public-private partnership that who determines the content and that the content gets um, more commercial. And I don't want to see that. I want to keep public community TV public with the programs that it has. Democracy Now! is one of my favorite ones that's broadcast. So, um, and I think of that bumper sticker, it'll be a great day when the schools have all the money they need and the Air Force has to have a bake sale to buy a bomber. Well, it will be a great day when all the community services have all the money they need and uh, the Air Force has to have a big sale to buy a bomber. Maybe you could write to the military and say, could we just have the money for our community for one of these weapons, and um, we could do so much to benefit the well-being of our community. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address us on this item? Seeing none, we have a recommendation on page 340. Do you have any action? I'll move the recommendation. We have a motion for Supervisor second. Friends, second by Supervisor Leopold. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, we're going to take a 10-minute break and return at 11 o'clock for items number 35 and 36, the medical marijuana uh, items and uh, at this point. So we'll be back at uh, 11 o'clock. Well, and we have to get that.